Curtis Heimerl, and I'm here to talk about my Pitt UN 2020 project, uh, DIY Telecoms for Puget Sound Universal Access. This is a project about community networks. Now, what are community networks? Community networks are networks that are owned and operated by users, uh, often in a cooperative fashion. Uh, the big idea here is that instead of your normal ISP, your Comcast or AT&T of the world, what we wanna do is empower the people being connected with the ability to build and govern their communication networks and bring that power back into the community. So in these, uh, there's a bunch of associated skills. People not only get internet access, but they learn tech and organizing uh, and are trained on the sort of basic elements uh, and including even higher ele level elements of networks. Now my lab has a long history of such work. On the left here, you can see um, some people from my lab helping out with an installation in uh, rural Mexico. In the center, you can see an installation in rural Indonesia. And on the right is one of our Seattle community network installations. Uh, we'll note that Seattle is uh, you know, very different from these other environments and may not be as obvious, obviously in need of uh, internet access. But uh, recently, the city of Seattle put together a survey um, and found that 95% of Seattleites have internet access, which is quite good. Right? We're in one of the most connected places in the world. But that last 5% is exactly the place where my lab works. Uh, and indeed, they went into that 5% and it is what you would expect. People living in poverty are significantly more likely to have uh, lack of internet access. People with a disability, racial and ethnic minorities, and so on. All of them are disproportionately likely uh, to not have internet access in Seattle. And so that's the goal of this project at its core to bring internet access and all the benefits of internet access and the growing importance of internet access to the people in the city of Seattle who don't have it. Now we do this by building socio-technical systems. Uh, and so this grant covers both the development of novel technical elements of building up these kind of networks, as well as the social science and community building uh, supporting them. Our specific solution uh, is LTE in the CBRS bands. Uh, this is one of the first such uh, networks to use this technology, it's very new, uh, to provide connectivity in the cities. Uh, the reason we do this versus the traditional answer of Wi-Fi coverage is that cellular coverage is much, much wider. Um, it's called home or fixed Wi-Fi, or sorry, home uh, fixed uh, wireless. And uh, you can install uh, a, an antenna on a roof and provide connectivity to a large number of people at high, uh, high bandwidth. Um, broadband connectivity. We have, throughout the grant period, installed a number of installations. Uh, the Filipino Community Center in South Seattle, Skyway Library in Skyway, which is sort of in between uh, Seattle and uh, Tacoma, where our other insula installation is in the Hilltop neighborhood. We are actively installing at Franklin High School, Garfield High School, the Oromo Cultural Center in South Seattle, and Surge in Tacoma. Now, as mentioned, this project has both technical and non-technical elements. Um, we've been doing significant software engineering. These are some maps, uh, some coverage maps. Uh, on the left is in Tacoma, and on the right is uh, the Filipino Community Center installation, as well as measurements of um, uh, performance. Uh, you can see um, tracking that over time uh, and seeing how well uh, the network is performing. Now, a core element of what we've done is actually try to build out a brand new core network architecture. This is fairly uh, deep in the woods technical work. Uh, the idea here is that your traditional MNO. Uh, your AT&T and your T-Mobile uh, install equipment in parallel in the city and compete against each other to provide coverage. And that's not gonna work when we're supporting cooperatives providing internet access to their constituents. Instead, what we do is um, provide a new backend that allows them to cooperate. Basically weave together multiple small community networks to create one larger MNO. Uh, and we uh, are in the process of deploying this uh, with the installations that we have in place. Now the day-to-day -day of a, of a product Project like this involves a significant amount of operations, installation of equipment, testing and troubleshooting, and more interestingly, in the recent past, uh, teaching and training. Uh, this has become a more and more important part, and we brought in and uh, started working with a number of new partners to provide connectivity. These are installations uh, that we've been doing, uh, and that window shot is uh, some user equipment in a house providing internet access. We also uh, manage the social elements of what's going on, building our website. Uh, and providing training materials uh, about community networks. Lastly, I want to speak to, or to, almost lastly, I want to speak to the benefits of this project to Pitt UN. First, we're growing the body of socio-technical researchers. The people on this grant really are uh, both turning wrenches, uh, writing code, and uh, managing and engaging with community members. 
Uh, and these researchers are, I think, uh, exemplars of uh, the kind of researchers that UN would like to put together. Uh, we're also deploying this actual network platform, actual infrastructure for future connectivity research. Uh, and indeed, it's part of an SNCC funded grant and uh, uh, that we'll be picking up soon. Another piece of the grant is our community networks course. Uh, so we've put together a capstone. It's ongoing uh, here in the fall quarter with students both doing technical development as well as uh, engaging with partners. Uh, this material, including the project outputs from the class, will be made available here in the winter when the class is over. And lastly, this grant has allowed us to expand with new partnerships uh, and new grants. Uh, so we brought on Black Brilliance Research Project, Seattle Central College, API Chai, and a number of other partners who are taking the research agenda, um, developing their own research agendas, um, and uh, bringing the project to places that, that we could not bring it on our own. Lastly, uh, lessons learned. Uh, I was initially skeptical of the appetite in these communities for this kind of engagement, but uh, it turns out that even when competing with free or low cost internet, there's still a strong desire to own the infrastructure, to really own the data, to own the entire ecosystem rather than trusting these external companies to do this. Uh, similarly, there's been a strong undergraduate interest in this space. Uh, we've built a large team that have been going out and doing this work um, in the field. And lastly, um, training has become a more and more important part of this infrastructure. It's similar to the organizational appetite for doing this. People also want to know how to build these things and how to maintain these things. And so uh, our focus shifted somewhat to training with um, uh, our partners and, and their uh, research agendas in that direction as well. So thank you all very much. Um, I'm Curtis Emerald.